Hi, Tim. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. Uh, so uh, can you share your thoughts on the future of cryptocurrency? Right. Are you, you tell me when you need me on. Uh, can you start now? Sure. Uh, so I'm a, 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 am I facing the audience? Yes. Terrific. Well, great. Thank you very much for having me. Um, and it's great to hear that the Korean soccer team or the Korean football team beat the uh, Germans. I think that's great news. And um, and I've been uh, I've been really interested in talking to Koreans because my first exposure, my first thinking about cryptocurrency of any kind was from a Korean. I I learned that there was a game called Legend that that 40% of Korea was playing, and my uh, my friend from Korea said. Yeah, it's such a big deal that I have to, uh, I had to, to uh, hire an avatar, uh, hire a guy to be my avatar when I went away to work every morning, and so that I could continue to play the game. And I thought, wow, people are really serious about this game. And then he talked about how he paid $40 for a sword in the game. And I thought he was just talking about a sword, like a real sword, but no, he was talking about pixels on the screen. And, and this was about 2003 or 2004. And I thought, wow, people are going to really, I think this is going to be really something interesting where people are going to use virtual coin, virtual uh, money uh, to buy virtual goods. Not just real money to buy virtual goods, not just um, you know, hiring people with real money to get them to play your virtual game. I started to think, okay, there are going to be people at the virtual level, and then there are going to be people at the real level. And, uh, and there are going to be two different lives they're leading. They're going to be able to, they're going to be able to transact business. There's going to be real estate up there, and I, I knew there would be currency of some sort. So when Bitcoin came along, I was well prepared because you guys in Korea are always way ahead of the pack in technology, and, uh, and I was ready. And so I, I invested in Bitcoin, and I, I thought that this was going to be great, invested in a in a guy who was going to go mine some Bitcoin for me. And Bitcoin at that time was $6 of Bitcoin. And he said he could get it to me for $4 of Bitcoin. So he used my money to go, to go create an ace, go buy, um, so that he could buy cryptocurrency or create Bitcoin, go find it. And, uh, and what happened was the people who made the ASIC, instead of shipping it to them on time, they used it and they mined their own Bitcoin. And meanwhile, Bitcoin price went from six to thirty-six dollars. And then he finally got his chip, and uh, and and then uh, he started mining the Bitcoin, and he stored all the Bitcoin at Mount Gox. So I, I think I bought many tens of thousands of Bitcoin, and uh, and because Mount Gox then disappeared all the money, and so I started to think, oh well, maybe this was the end of a great experiment, because I thought, wow, Bitcoin, this is really going to be something. This the, the idea that I could do crypto, uh, I can actually uh, have a virtual that was exciting. So I was mad that the Mt. Gox took all the money, but mostly I was just disappointed that the um, the Bitcoin didn't uh, wasn't going to be there and, and worth anything. But after the Mt. Gox um, announced, 
Bitcoin only dropped about 10 or 15 percent on the news. I thought it was going to go to zero. And all of a sudden I realized, wow, people really need this. People need a currency that they can trust even, even more than even though they couldn't trust the, the exchange. They needed a currency that they could trust that was global and not tied to any current, any uh, political force one way or another. And that's when I got very excited about Bitcoin. And I met a guy, Sebastian Serrano, who came and he, he created a, an exchange. I, I invested in about 10 exchanges because my son, uh, uh, who's the accelerator for Bitcoin, uh, he was... He was uh, totally into it, and he, and he brought in a whole bunch of exchanges from all over the world. And so I invested in a whole bunch. Two from Korea, both Corbett and Coinplug. But, but there was one called Bitpagos, and, and the entrepreneur there said, I'm from Argentina, and only... And only... Uh, I'm 30 years old, only 30 years old, and in history of Argentina, my history of Argentina, my family has already lost their fortune three times. So, so they've lost their fortune three times in 30 years. He says, we can't trust the currency, so it's very difficult to work in Argentina because you make a fortune and then, and then it's taken from you. And so he got very excited about Bitcoin and he built a big company called Big Pagos. And then he um, ended up building by Ripley, which was a cryptocurrency. So, so that was the beginning for me where I realized that there were a lot of other countries in the world that didn't have currencies that were very stable that would really need a currency that was global and decentralized and not subject to the whims of some government. And so I got very excited and, um, and then I ended up buying the, the Silk Road auction and, uh, and bought the whole auction because I thought, well, th you know, this is really going to be a big thing and I might as well um, really participate in a big way. I actually only thought I was going to get like some portion of the auction, but I bid so high, like the whole thing. And then I looked pretty stupid. It was, it was 632 when I bought the Bitcoin, and it went straight down to about 230. But I knew there were all these engineers working on this new token, and they were all going to be participating in, in, in enhancing the environment, building the network making it all a, a, a nicer uh, environment for people to use Bitcoin. And so um, so I did high, and, and when it was down about 230, I said, it's going to go to 10,000 in three years. And, uh, and sure enough, it was almost three years to the day when Bitcoin hit 10,000, and ironically, I was in Argentina that day and probably should have been in, in Korea. I'll probably be in Korea when it hits 250,000. My uh, next prediction came when Bitcoin was about 7,000 and I said, I said, Bitcoin's going to go to 250,000. And people are people all looked at me again and they looked at me and they said, oh, he's crazy. There's no way this will happen but i i truly believe that there's a, a 40x on your money if you buy bitcoin today because you um there will be first of all bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are just better currency than the yuan or the dollar or the peso or the or any or the yen or any any crypt any currency that's fiat and tied to a political force.
first. So I think that's a big deal. And, and I think that uh, these, these political forces are going to decrease the value of their own currencies because they'll keep, keep it inflating. Of course, Bitcoin, there are only 21 million of them out there. And, and so I feel like you've got this, this currency that is not subject to political whims, decentralized, it's easy to move across borders, um, it's, it's just better, it's easy to use as a as remittance, it's easier to pay people in uh, micropayments, and, uh, and it's just going to be a better, it's just a matter of time allowing all the engineers to build the environment uh, so that at Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are going to be um, uh, easily used. And it's interesting, I've, I've just seen a, uh, actually I might be able to show it to you. I, I just saw a, uh, an ad, Kentucky Fried Chicken, here it is. There's my ad for Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's the Bitcoin bucket, and it's only available for Bitcoin in Canada. It's the only, it's you're not allowed to buy the Bitcoin bucket for, for Canadian dollars or anything else. So that's kind of that, and, and Overstock, and all these other companies that are that are starting to use uh, Bitcoin to take Bitcoin. Uh, are going to make it easier and easier and easier, and pretty soon we won't even notice, but we will be paying in Bitcoin. And when that happens, then I believe that cryptocurrencies will replace fiat currency, or at least at least take a bigger and bigger market share of it. And right now, there are eighty-six trillion dollars worth of fiat currencies running around the world. 86 trillion, and Bitcoin's about uh, about 200 billion, and so there is a lot of room there, and all the other cryptocurrencies are another maybe 200 billion, so maybe 400 billion. 400 billion is going to move and and flip the 86 trillion dollars in currency because they're just better currencies; they're not tied to political weight. So. Uh, so this is a really exciting time, and and that's just Bitcoin. The uh, the other the other things that happen because of Bitcoin, there's the there's the blockchain and it's a perfect ledger, it keeps perfect track of of where uh, currency goes, keeps perfect track of data, and so as people's identities become more safe. And data becomes more uh, more secure and on the blockchain, and identity will be nailed, and we're going to be in a much better position to trade in cryptocurrency. And uh, and so, so that's the blockchain, it, it, and there won't be any reason for a, sorry if there are any accountants in the audience, but there won't be a real reason for an accountant because. If I if I send you a big and the accounting is already taken care of, if you send it into the government, the accounting is all taken care of, and so that we don't need anybody to go audit it because it's being audited by all the miners who are watching over every block on the blockchain. And then there's the smart contract, and the smart contract is deal that made and doesn't require any lawyer. It's it's set in stone. The deal is completely set in stone. So if I if I bet on Germany and you bet on South Korea, we each bet a Bitcoin and then South Korea beat Germany and we bet it on a smart contract and South Korea beat Germany, the two Bitcoin would go to you and leave leave my wallet because we have this set in contract. Well, if you put some of these things together, you put uh, a great cryptocurrency together with uh, a blockchain 
where you have really good data, and then you put it together with a smart contract and add a little artificial intelligence, you can replace major industries. There's, there's no reason to have banking. There's no reason to have insurance. Uh, you, can, you can replace the banking industry, the insurance industry, um, the way real estate is handled through titles. You can, you can manage um, health care in a much better, more efficient, effective way because the data will all be, be certain and all be there. And then government itself could potentially change in a, in a major way. So this is one of the greatest transformations in the history of the world. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect the trillion dollar industry. Whereas the internet affected maybe the media, communications, information. Those were the $100 billion industries. But now it's like real estate and banking and insurance and government. Healthcare, those are the biggest industries in the world, some of them. And they are going to be transformed by, by the blockchain, Bitcoin, smart contracts, and uh, a little bit of artificial intelligence. So um, I thought I would just end there, open up your minds, open up your thinking, and take any questions that you have. So maybe, David, if you can, uh, type in whatever question that come up from the audience. And maybe we can uh, can make uh, answer some of those questions. Sorry, I heard that in in Korean, and I don't have a translator. No, no, I just asked if uh, the audience has any questions. Now, if there are if there are no questions. I can go on because um, I something I haven't mentioned is how healthcare could potentially change. And so, as you're collecting questions, um, healthcare. Think about how healthcare can operate. You can have control over all your data. It can all be on the blockchain. It can be very stable. And uh, and then that that data can then get uh, sent out into the cloud. The cloud can all, can all uh, uh, aggregate all that data. And then you can, you can find out different things about different people. So it's not just, your, not just your healthcare records that can be up there. It can be your blood test results, your uh, height and weight, your uh, genetic history, your what you had for breakfast, Fitbit result, all that can aggregate out there in the cloud, and and so we can find much more accurate and precise uh, 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 determinations when when people get sick. So you can you can uh, you can say, oh hey, I've got a sore throat, and I say I've got a sore throat. We might have entirely different diagnoses because of who we are and where we've been and how we've how we've been affected and uh and so healthcare could end up being very much data oriented and much less um of a of a doctor patient uh situation and i think doctors will if they their doctors are going to medical school for 16 years so that they can memorize all the things that can go wrong with you and all of the things that they can tell you if they go wrong or all the drugs they can they can recommend or all the operations they can recommend. Well, now, a lot of those recommendations are going to come down from the cloud and the doctors um, are going to be more like uh, interpreters and consultants and it's going to be a whole different education system. So, um, we've got a very exciting, very bright future, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you Korean entrepreneurs know it. So, any questions now?
Sorry, all I'm hearing is a buzzing noise. I'll give it a couple of more minutes. A couple more minutes, but uh, anyway, hey, thank you very much, Korea. Thank you for being such a leading charge in all of these new technologies. It's great to be able to speak to you. I'm sorry I'm not there in person, but it was very nice of you to set this up, and I hope the technology worked on your end. It was a little fuzzy on my end, um, and it was and it. So far, I'm very pleased with my Corbett and CoinPlug investment. And I look forward to doing many, many more investments in Korea. And I encourage all of you entrepreneurs to think very hard about how your business can potentially use uh, all of these new technologies. I mean, the idea that you can do a, that you create your own cryptocurrency like that and and uh, raise money for your startup. It's really easy and and, uh, and exciting and and focused way uh, is is a major opportunity for you as an entrepreneur. And I look at some of these ICOs. Some of them don't make any sense, but I look at some of them. I say that it's like a Kickstarter societal transformation. It's a, it's a change in society that we want to have happen. And so we buy that coin and as the network grows, the coin's value goes higher. And, and the, uh, the thinking behind Bitcoin as people uh, was to create a currency that was, that was free and open, decentralized. And uh, and so that there was a real movement behind it, and still is. And as more wallets are added, the, the value of the Bitcoin will continue to go up. And with that, I think I'm going to have to sign off. I'm 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 talking a little into a void, and I'm not quite sure whether you guys are hearing me or not. Oh, <clears throat> Tim, we have one question from the audience. Oh, good. We got a question. Tim,我们通过中部特特的话，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我们，我
that will be uh, used for certain purposes. Certain groups of people will want to uh, identify with them. And then there will be a lot of currencies that will just disappear. Um, there is, I mean, if you, if you went today and tried to sell some of these currencies that are sort of the tail end, there, there's no buyer for them. And so that the, the effective value of a lot of the currencies is zero today. But I think that there are going to be many, many interesting uses, just the way that there were many, many interesting uses of, of the Internet and where, where different companies rose to the top. So I think I, I would look at Bitcoin and I think of Bit, Bitcoin as the, as the Microsoft and, um, and Ethereum might be the Google, but then the... The Netflix and the uh, and the Facebook and the Skype are probably not yet uh, not yet created, or or they're just small small points that people are working on to to develop a following right now. So we have we're in the we're in the first minute of a of a sixty minute game. And I think uh, we're it, it's very healthy to sort of have a have a boom, and then the wave the wave sort of crashes, and then the big tsunami comes. We're about to experience the tsunami. I think we're we're within a year or two when the tsunami starts to come for some of the really good, strong technological points. I'm I. I'm a big um, believer in, in in coins like Tezos that have a um, that are going to be proof of uh, state rather than proof of work. But but Bitcoin will actually be enhanced as energy costs go down. Computing power is starting to require less energy. And uh, and that's going to start to happen. Super compute. I mean, uh, quantum computers. Uh, they don't require nearly as much energy as a uh, as a CMOS computer. And so this is a um, this is a really interesting time there. Uh, and and I think uh, you know people said, oh yeah, well Bitcoin was too slow, but. When, when there was a new technology that showed how you could do a faster coin, then Lightning Network came along and sped up Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's as fast as anything now, um, if you use the Lightning Network. So this is um, this is going to be a horse race, but uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum really have a big lead. Well, thank you, Tim. Hope to see you in person in in our next forum in Korea. Thank you. Terrific. Thanks so much for having me.